This video is sponsored by me. Well, really by the tens of members over on my Patreon page. They're a pretty fun bunch, and you're welcome to join them. Perks include early access to upcoming videos, downloadable exercises, transcriptions from lesson videos, and occasional patron-only videos. Shout me $1.50 to say thanks. $4.50 for full access. And if you pay more, who knows what sort of extra learning you'll get. Link in the description. Paying more may or may not lead to more learning. How's it going everyone? I've received a request to give a bass lesson in the Walking Jazz Standard Series on the great jazz tune like Someone in Love. This is one of my favorite jazz tunes. I've always enjoyed playing it, so I'm happy to grant the request. The 6th edition real book has this tune in the key of E flat major, although it's actually more of a vocalist's tune and is often played in keys like C or F major. There are also a few common chord substitutions possible, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So breaking down the form of Like Someone in Love, we're in the key of E flat major. We know this because there are three flats in the key signature. The song form is 32 bars. It appears to be only 24 bars, but remember there are repeat signs and first and second time endings. So the form of this tune is as follows. A, B, the first time section, back to the A again, and C, the second time section. For the chords, we start off with the one chord and the six chord with this nice descending bass line through the use of slash chords. Sometimes this chord will be a G7 with a D in the bass. But remember, as a bass player, when you encounter a slash chord on a chart, it means to play the rightmost note after the slash. So we have E flat major 7 with a D in the bass, and C minor 7 with a B flat in the bass, and so on. F7 is a secondary dominant 7th, the 5 chord of the 5 chord, B flat 7. From now on, I'll be referring to chords like this as 5 of 5. The descending bass line continues chromatically into these two chords. Some charts have an A flat 7 chord here. This gives us the 13 and sharp 11 notes in the melody, F and D, respectively. Next, we have a 2 5 into the 2 chord. In line 2, we see a simple 2-5-1 in E-flat major, followed by a 2-5 leading into the 4 chord in the B section. We commonly see a 2-5 in G inserted here, A-7, D7, leading back to E-flat major 7. This is another version of the backdoor 2-5 we discussed in the Donnelly lesson. Here, the D7 chord resolves up by a half step instead of a whole step. The same progression can be seen in tunes like It Could Happen To You and I Remember You. Moving on to the B section, the lead sheet reads A flat 6 as the 6, F, is being played in the melody. Now we see our first dramatic shift harmonically into the key of C major. In the next line, there are more 2 fives. The first is a 2-5 in B-flat, but instead of going to B-flat, we see another 2-5 in the home key of E-flat major, returning for the second A section. It's important to note that the 5 chord in this bar is what we call altered. The altered note is the sharp 5, and again, this is because the sharp 5, F-sharp, is being played in the melody. The C section is much the same as the B section, with the addition of F sharp diminished 7. I believe this chord is functioning as a D7 flat 9 chord. If we put D in the bass here, we would literally have a D7 flat 9 chord voicing, which would function as the 5 chord into G minor 7. And we have a 3, 6, 2, 5, 1 turnaround to close off the tune. For this lesson, I've prepared a two chorus bass line. The first chorus is a two feel, and the second chorus is walking bass. This line utilizes common rhythmic devices like eighth notes, triplets, and percussive notes.
So there's quite a lot happening in this baseline from the two feel into the walking line. So we have a fair bit to break down today. So let's get right into it. We'll start with the two feel chorus. One thing about playing a two feel is you don't always have to just play half notes. There's a lot more options that you've got. And a lot of these ideas come from thinking like a drummer. Um, because when you listen to good when you listen to good jazz drummers, they're doing a lot of stuff. They're playing lots of triplets, lots of eighth notes, lots of different rhythms. And so we can also do that as bass players. We can get ideas from drummers and we can use them in our own lines as well. So we'll go from the top. We start the bass line really, really simply just with half notes. So our bass line has somewhere to go. You know, you don't want to start too complicated. You want to give, give some room for the music to breathe. And so that's why just half notes. Now bar four, we have our first little bit of movement. We're going to use some triplets. Now the way to count this type of triplet where we're not playing the first note on the downbeat of beat two is you have to feel the triplet first. So you're going to count triplet, 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 triplet. Okay, triplet, triplet. Got to try to feel that first triplet even though it's not written. So one thing that helps for me personally is I listen to when I hear a note land on beat two. Say it, say if that note's by the drums, you know, you're listening for that beat two. One, two, three, four. Okay, and that can help you to get the timing of that triplet. This idea in bar eight, um, I'm playing B flat, going down to the E, playing B flat again for the eighth note, and then holding onto it into the third beat. You often hear bass players like Ron Carter do this type of thing all the time. It's a really nice way to get a big, thick, heavy bass tone. And it just sounds so great. Back to half note playing with a tiny bit of movement. Now that phrase looks a lot harder than it actually is to play. So I'm just playing half note C, E, and then playing two eighth notes. And I'm actually hammering on with my left hand to the C. Playing an X note with my middle finger on the open D string. And then the second X note in bar 12 is I'm pulling off this B natural note to get to the open G string. Um, play that again. And that last triplet is actually really easy to play. I'm playing E natural, and then I'm raking down G, D, C as the triplet. So you can take these types of ideas and turn them into an exercise to help you with this idea. You can do lots and lots of different things to help with that raking pattern. It sounds really fancy, but it's actually a fairly easy um, thing to play on bass because of the way the bass is laid out. A bit more movement, hammer on. This phrase is all eighth notes, and you can definitely play play like this during a two feel. So I'm playing open G, X note. It's hard to play these X notes when they're not played at tempo. When you play them at tempo, they're much, much easier to play, so it's kind of difficult to get the right sound on video here. 
okay? But I'm basically just playing after the G natural note, playing two notes leading into the root of C, B flat, B, C, and then shifting E flat, E, F. And each of these passing notes, the B natural going into C and the E going into F, I'm playing as a hammer on. Just to lighten the, the sound of the line a bit more. Going down to the F on the A string. Playing off the beat. Then that's a nice drop, really easy drop for G7. Root, fifth, third, right? It's, it's a nice line that's classic for the upright bass uses the o open strings. Just roots on F sharp. Some more movement and a stop on the one chord. All right, so moving on to the four feel, opening up with a pickup into beat one. Just playing root notes. Okay, in bar, that would be bar four of page two. Just playing eighth notes up to the root of C7, and then a passing note into F minor. Going to the fifth of B flat. Descending to the root, root fifth, and going to the third of A flat major. Okay, so we're in this position now where we're playing, we've just played C with the first finger on the G string. This is middle C, and we're gonna descend down the A flat major seven arpeggio. And this is a great position to play it in. It's super easy on bass, even on the upright bass. You've got third and then A flat on the D string. Play G on the D string as well. You could play it as an open, but this works really easily, and then the fifth on the A string. So for this arpeggio, you're basically just zigzagging down the strings. Then I can play open D for the two five. Nice walk up. That phrase in bar 12 of page two, where we get to the fifth of C major seven, Ray Brown does this a lot, or Ray Brown did this a lot. You then go to the open A, the six, the two, and then the five, All right? So basically just playing a bunch of fourths. Fourth, fourth, and then get to C minor. Walk up. Another walk up. Let me get this right. Shift here is probably the best way of doing that. That phrase there, root, nine, and then eighth notes, fifth, nine, or F, C, and I'm gonna pull off to B, to B natural. Play an X note, and then play the fifth of E flat major. The start of the next A section. So I was really targeting the fifth of E flat major seven there, and that's a really great way to give your line some more interest. Occasionally going to the fifth of the one chord is a great, is a great thing to do. As I always say, you need to be careful when you target notes that are other than the root note. But if you have an idea in mind and you know how to voice your idea, and then you can make it work and make it sound really, really good. So um, let me just play that line again, um, the fourth line of page two. E flat major seven with the fifth in the bass. Triplet. Hammer on. 
lot happening in those two bars there. We'll go back and we'll talk about what that is. So for this triplet, for F7 on A, I'm going to play uh, A, open string, E flat, open string. So once again, this is a rake. It's just a rake with the right hand. Do it all with the same finger. You could play the top A with the second finger. That's the way that I do it. I play A and then rake all the others with the first finger. Nice drop. And for the final section, the C section of the walking bass line, we get some more X notes. Go to, going to the sixth of A flat major seven, that F. Once again, just to cover these X notes, the way that I'm doing them is I'm typically playing the walking notes with my first finger and the X notes with my middle finger. Just in general. I don't always do it that way, but that's the most common technique that I use personally. Now that's just going down the chord tones on F sharp diminished, root, flat five, root, minor third. And a nice big drop on B flat seven and I walk up to finish. And that's the full bass line. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you wanna check out this bass line and get the full thing so you can work on it yourself, it's up on Patreon right now. So I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support my efforts here on YouTube, please consider becoming a patron. There is a link down below in the description. Thanks a lot. See you next time.